Hi, Nero Thambi Pillay from Investment Rise. As a property investor, one of your major goals is always going to be capital growth. And in this video, I want to give you two little strategies that I believe will be really, really powerful and will help you maximize the chances of getting capital growth on your next investment property. Now, before we do that though, let me have a look at how most people do their research when it comes to looking at areas to invest in for future capital growth. Number one, they look at how much growth the area's had in the past, thinking that, okay, if this area's had lots and lots of growth in the past few years, well, now's the time to, to jump in and hopefully I'm gonna get that, that growth going, going forwards. Unfortunately, what happens is, for those people who employ that strategy, and let's just say that would, that would be you, at just at the time that you jump into the market or just after you jump into the market, that's when it seems to go flat or go, even go backwards depending on where, where you've bought. And why does that happen? Well, it's not because it, there's a conspiracy necessarily, but what happens is if you've studied capital growth movements, price movements for any market around Australia, what you'll find is that in a 10 to 12 year property cycle or whatever cycle is for that area that you're looking at, most of the growth only happens in about a third of the cycle. But unfortunately, many novice investors will wait till all that growth has happened and then go, oh, now I'm gonna jump in. And unfortunately, get burnt, okay? Because often when you buy determines where you should be buying. For example, everyone knows Sydney's had some phenomenal growth. But I also know many investors who bought back in Sydney in, in sort of 2005 and then sold in 2011 because they had next to no growth in five or six years. Now, Sydney's a great place and we all know what's happened since then. But for those people who bought at the wrong time, so 2005 was just after the previous boom, they bought the top of the market after there'd been so much growth, and then it just went flatline for many, many years afterwards. So first of all, looking at past growth that isn't a necessary precursor or a necessary condition for, for future growth. What's the other way people do their research? Well, they throw a rock blindly somewhere close to where they live, land and wherever the, the rock lands, essentially buy that property and hope and pray that it goes up in value. And if you get lucky, if your timing is good and you happen to buy in the middle of a boom, great, good luck to you. But more often than not, that's a strategy for failure. Or number three, they either invest where a lot of their friends and family tell them to invest or where a particular hotspot that comes up in, in the media. See, that's all well and good, but how do you know, how do you feel confident that you're making the right decision? Well, rather than looking at those three mistakes, if you've been watching any of my videos, you know I'm all about looking at the capital growth drivers. And definitely check out my past videos, I go through many of them in detail, but just to give you the, the top ones, number one you're looking for is jobs growth, you're looking for employment growth, you're looking for infrastructure investment, combined with a low vacancy rate. These are the kind of factors you're looking for when you're investing in an area. But once you've kind of got those key drivers, the question is, is now the time to invest in that particular market? How do you know? Well, this is where we come down to the two little strategies that I mentioned at the start of this video. Number one, look for a change. So what I mean by that is this, if you, an area ticks all the boxes for you from a capital growth perspective, it meets all the key, dri key drivers, then the question is, well, is now the time to invest? And then you look at, well, if the population is growing, if there's a lot of infrastructure and jobs, well, what's gonna change? What's changed? So if the area's had next to no growth in the last few years, okay, what's gonna make it now grow and hopefully grow steeply? For example, has a train line just come in that's been promised for 10 years and it's finally been delivered? Or uh, is there a new major company deciding to put their headquarters right, right there, which is gonna create all sorts of jobs? What's the change that's gonna cause this growth? Look for that. If you can find markets there where they've got all the key drivers, but they're sort of being in a bit of a limbo, shall we say, the calm before the storm, waiting for that change, look for that change, and then you're stacking the odds of getting capital growth in your favor. The second way of doing it though, for those of us who want to look at areas that have got their, had a lot of growth in the past, that's when it come down to the ripple effect. And I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard to explain that. The ripple effect. What is it and how can you use it for your advantage? Let's just say we have a suburb and call it suburb A. And say this area's had some phenomenal growth in the last little, little while. Well, then you wanna look at, well, okay, if that suburb's had some great growth, what about the suburbs surrounding it? Okay, so within say a five minute or a 10 minute radius, depending on, on the area that you're looking at, 
up here, is there now a large difference between suburb A and the area suburbs in this little area here? Because if that difference starts to get higher, then what you want to see is, well, now are people starting to move from here, or rather than buying in suburb A, are they buying in these locations, for example? If so, then this is what you want to start aiming at. Why? Because what's going to happen is, once the, the price points here gets too high or much higher than the surrounding areas, people will go, well, I don't need to buy in suburb A, I can buy five minutes away and buy for a lot less. And then what you'll start to see is then that goes out again to this next ring and people start moving out from A to this next ring to, to this next ring and so on and so forth. And we've seen this happen time and time again. But take for example, the, the Sydney boom. It started in the CBD and then it moved out to the next ring and the next ring and now obviously all of Sydney has, has grown. We also see this on a larger level. So we see the boom happen in Sydney and Melbourne. Then it goes across to larger regional centres and, and to capital cities like Brisbane. Then it goes across to, to, to Perth, for, for example, and so on and so forth. So the ripple effect doesn't always go in a particular order. Sure, so you've got to do your research. But if you're looking at it from a micro perspective and you identify these great suburbs that got lots of growth, then look around. Is there good infrastructure surrounding it? Are people happy to live out there? I'd be certainly, if I miss suburb A, I would then use suburb A as my anchor point to then look at suburbs around the area to take advantage of the ripple effect. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you didn't mind the, the shirt chain when we did the work on the whiteboard. But now you've got two little strategies there that can be really, really powerful to help stack the odds of getting good capital growth in your favor. No one's got a crystal ball, but if you can apply a bit more science, a bit more strategy, and look at these key factors, you're then giving your chance, rather giving yourself the best chance of success. I'd love to know what you think about these two strategies. Let me know in the comments field below. I'd love to hear from you. Bye for now.